Okay, you guys, Bo and I are stepping outside. We've got fresh basil growing right here. We've got some cilantro. We've got all kinds of good stuff, and it's inspiring me to cook. So I've decided I'm gonna cook three nights in a row, and I'm gonna make three epic restaurant-style meals for you guys that are ridiculously easy and ridiculously cheap. We almost never do spaghetti anymore, and so I'm gonna do a basic spaghetti with red sauce, but you guys, I've perfected this red sauce. It is so, so good. I'm gonna do one of our favorite carry-out style Indian meals in a veggie fried rice, again, carry-out style. So comment below and tell me which is your favorite. So stepping inside, getting ready to prep the food, I wanna talk real quick about mise en place. Mise en place actually literally means putting things in place. And so I like to rinse, chop, get everything pretty well ready for these recipes. Not only does it save me time, again, it keeps me organized, but you'll find too when cooking, let's say you put your onion and garlic in the pot and then you're having to run back and forth to the fridge to rinse things. You're gonna overcook your onion, your garlic, your rice isn't gonna get started on time. So we like to get everything out, get it all ready. You guys can see I have my cutting board here. I've got my super good Japanese knife, my honing device to make sure this is nice and sharp. I like to have a plate on either side of my cutting board for the stuff I'm gonna throw in the compost, the stuff I'm gonna throw in the pot. I've got two towels here to wipe and clean things up. My water, of course, and we keep our complement essentials in the fridge too, so I actually know to get them out while I'm chopping dinner. Erin likes to space hers out throughout the day, but I like to take mine all in the evening so you guys know that we love compliment it's the daily essential that we want to take as an insurance policy on a plant-based or vegan diet here i am giving you guys amazing plant-based recipes it would be unwise for me to give you advice if i wasn't first making sure that you guys were going to get what you need and that's why we love and recommend compliment we seriously love this company we legitimately like five minutes ago just got off of a live chat on instagram with matt one of the founders we love everything these guys do from the compostable packaging to the products they make we know we can trust them and most importantly we know we have our bases covered nutritionally again matt the founder actually just said they take a very conservative approach to supplementing especially if you're like us and you're eating a very robust and well-rounded plant-based diet you don't need a ton of stuff. One of the coolest things that we've done recently is their at-home test kits. So you do a blood draw, you send your information in, and they legitimately tell you what you may be lacking, what you're good on, and they can actually personalize supplements for you. If you guys are interested in that or any of their other products, I definitely recommend clicking the link below and checking them out. As always, you guys can save 15% at checkout by using our code. Again, everything is linked below. Okay, you guys, let's get right into some recipes. I'm gonna start out with an epic Asian stir fry. This one does not last long on our table around the house. You guys can see I've got my mise en place, everything in place and ready to go. So I like to start by heating up my pan with some soy sauce or nama shoyu. For spices in this one, this is really all I use. I use quite a bit of it, probably about a tablespoon with just some garlic powder and onion powder. It really doesn't even need much salt because of the saltiness of the soy sauce. I'm gonna throw a little bit more water in the pan and then start chopping the things that take the longest, like my carrots. I'm also gonna start, as usual, with our onion and garlic. I'm kind of doing a unique onion chop. I'm gonna dice half of the onion and then I'm gonna cut the onion into larger chunks, kind of like you would typically see in a stir fry. And then I'm gonna add all of these to our hot saute. Chopping celery, I like to leave the pieces again a little bit bigger and I'm gonna put some radish in there too. Again, you can see I'm doing it in order of how long things take to cook. 
Now I'm gonna throw my broccoli in there and get it going. I really don't like to overcook things, especially like broccoli. The things that are the fastest are my mushrooms and zucchini. And I'm gonna leave these pieces big because I like them large in my meals. So I'm gonna toss these in and let them go for not very long along with some frozen peas. This stuff is gonna be ready in just a couple of minutes. Meanwhile, I'm gonna get started on my tofu. You guys have seen me do this so many times. I like to cube the tofu and top it with some coconut aminos. And then I throw it in the oven for probably about 10 minutes under the broiler so it gets really crispy. Meanwhile, I'm gonna cook my rice ramen. Aaron usually likes me to make this with rice, but we were both craving some ramen. This literally takes about a minute and a half for this stuff to boil up. So I pop it all off the oven and decided to actually steam my bok choy. This also took about 45 seconds. It went really, really fast, just in time for my tofu to come out hot and ready. I love bok choy. It's got a crisp crunch, a sweet flavor, and it just looks good. So in chef style, I had to lay it out on my plate. I seriously love this Asian stir fry, you guys, and the whole family does too. So Aaron and I slurped down some of our ramen bowls, and I ended up making some rice on the side for the kids, a mixture of brown and white jasmine, and I topped theirs with some avocado oil to bump up the fat. I hope you guys enjoy. Okay, you guys, let's kick off my favorite recipe of all time, our spaghetti with red sauce. I gotta start with seasonings. I'm gonna do some all seasoning, which isn't common for Italian, but I do just a little bit. I'm gonna throw some garlic powder in the mix, even though we will be chopping garlic. I'm also gonna add a little bit of turmeric. This is something I've started doing, and I swear it makes a difference. The onion powder gives a little bit of sweetness on top of the onion, and of course, course are oregano and basil. I use quite a bit of these two, probably like three quarters of teaspoon and just a dash of anise seed or fennel. And this is the base for so many of our Italian recipes and Indian too. Get yourself a good tomato puree and throw just a little bit in the pan with some oil if you choose. We are typically oil free, but occasionally I sneak a little bit into our Italian recipes with all of our spices and some salt and pepper. These are some epic little Campari tomatoes that are so sweet and so good. So I'm gonna chop these first and get them in the pot because I want these bad boys. Luscious, smooth, soft, and creamy, just like the sauce. I'm gonna follow that with my chopped garlic as small as I can get it and my onion, same thing. I'm gonna dice this onion as small as I can get it so these things almost dissolve into my red sauce. And because we like it's veggie loaded, I'm gonna dice and chop super small again my celery followed by some broccoli. Now these two take a little bit longer, so they're going in before the zucchini and mushroom. And like I said, I'm gonna chop all this up so super small, not only because I don't really want this to be a chunky sauce, but also because the kids are suspicious. If they start seeing too many veggies, they're gonna start asking questions. Now while my broccoli and celery cook down, I'm gonna chop my mushrooms and my zucchini. Now different from the Asian stir fry, I'm gonna chop these again super teeny tiny and throw them into the pot with the rest of my tomato puree and let this simmer for a good 20 or 30 minutes. That's the secret to really good red sauce is letting it simmer down. And while it does, I'm gonna cook my spaghetti. Next, I'm going to make our vegan Parmesan using a half cup of nutritional yeast, a half cup of cashews, and some salt simply blended up. You guys, this looks 
smells, and most importantly, tastes just like Parmesan, but it's been veganized. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get things off of the oven and get them ready to plate. But first, I'm adding a dash of maple syrup and a tiny spoon of coconut cream. You guys, these are the secret to the most epic spaghetti sauce. And if you guys haven't already, you should definitely check out these plant crumbles from Plant Boss. They're like a meat alternative, but they've got pretty whole food ingredients and they look and taste exactly like ground beef. Now I'm finally rinsing our brown rice noodles and getting ready to dish. There are so many kinds of noodles, chickpea, lentil, but I tend to like the brown rice noodles the best and Miss Olivia does too. So I'm gonna dish a plate for mom and then I'm actually gonna dish a couple plates for the kiddos with some of the Plant Boss meatless bites on there just for a little added protein and they were not disappointed. And moving across to Asia, now we are making Indian, probably our all time family favorite. We actually just went out last weekend and got Indian and of course spent like $100 for the four of us to go out to dinner. So I'm gonna remake it. It's gonna be all organic and of course, all delicious. So I'm gonna start out with a heaping teaspoon of garam masala followed by another teaspoon of coriander. Then I'm gonna do about a half teaspoon of cumin. Just be careful because that can be overbearing and so can the turmeric. So I'm gonna do another half teaspoon of that. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of vegetable broth to my pot and then add my spices and get them nice and heated up before I chop and add my red onion and my garlic. I'm gonna leave my onions long and lean for this recipe just because I like the way they show up in the dish. I'm gonna let these saute down for a few minutes before adding just a touch more vegetable broth and my other veggies like ginger. Now, you can grate your ginger or mince it super teeny tiny like I just did. And then I'm gonna add some tomatoes. Now, nowhere near the amount of tomatoes you're gonna need for an Italian recipe, but I'd say like two medium-sized tomatoes and get them going early. I'm also gonna start my rice now. I'm using some white jasmine rice because the kids especially love white and we're making this restaurant so I found these incredible teeny tiny little golden potatoes at Whole Foods and I'm gonna add the whole bag because they're so so good I'm gonna let those cook down in that extra vegetable broth and then lastly add our cauliflower some salt some pepper and I let this simmer for about 10 minutes before it's ready to go I ended up chopping a lime and some cilantro before I plate this up for my queen this, you guys, is seriously restaurant quality. And I ended up taking some Whole Foods tortillas and popping them in the toaster and they make a perfect naan. Aaron loved this, most importantly, but the kids and I did too. This is epic food. Hope you guys enjoy. Oh, 